Hi guys, welcome to Electrical Project channel. Today I'll show you how to upgrade RAM memory of your router. But before that let me explain how I came to this crazy idea and why I want to do it. Well, if you watched my previous video how to flush a chip of a router with a programmer, then you know that all this started when I flushed some crappy TP-Link from Wire that had some stupid downgrade lock in it. So I bought a programmer and got the ability to flush whatever I want directly into the chip. And I even made the flush chip easily accessible outside of the router's housing. That turned out to be a pretty good idea, because I quickly could restore my router if I did something wrong. Soon after I made that video, I started experimenting with an alternative from Wire. I flushed OpenWRT, and it changed everything. My router became much more stable, and I gained a lot of new functionality. Soon after that, I upgraded my flash chip from 4 MB to 16 MB. More flash memory means I can install more packages. But now I am faced with a new limitation. I have not enough RAM. My router has 32 MB of RAM memory, and it is enough for many use cases. But I think 64 MB will give me more freedom for future experimenting. So I bought 64 MB RAM chips. I bought 10 chips for 6.5 US dollars, which seems like a reasonable price. And today I'll try to unsolder all 32 MB RAM chip and solder new 64 MB chip. I hope my router survives all this. There are ways to unsolder the chip just with a soldering iron. But now I have a soldering station with a heat gun, so I'll use it. The whole process should be simple. But I don't have enough experience. Before this video I've tried to remove a couple of integrated circuits from old PCBs. But the router's PCB is important and I don't want to damage it. Also I want the old RAM chip to survive as well. Well, after applying flux I started heating pins of the chip. The temperature was about 350 degrees Celsius. But the chip didn't want to come out. The chip is most likely soldered by lead-free solder. Solder that contains lead usually has a lower melting temperature. I don't want to overheat PCB and chip, so I decided to apply solder that contains lead. And after this I started heating the chip again. Chip quickly came out this time. Now it is time to use solder wick in order to remove excessive solder. Now it is time to solder the new chip. And after the chip was soldered and cleaned, I turned the router on. But it didn't work. The router simply did not boot. After further inspection I found what the problem is. Look at this picture. Can you see what the problem is? No? Look here closely. Some pins aren't soldered properly. And I didn't notice it before. I definitely need to buy a good microscope. Well, after I soldered pins I inspected all of them with a needle. And they seem to be soldered well this time. So I connected the router to the power supply. Now the router starts. Success! And if you go into the graphical user interface, we can see that the router recognized the chip correctly. It started working with a new chip automatically. And that is all for today. Next time I'll try to add a USB port to the router. But it will be much more difficult, because USB pins are not directly accessible. So I'll need to drill system on a chip. I doubt that it's possible without the microscope. Thanks for watching, see you next time.